You may have heard about infrastructure as code and want to adopt it for one of your projects using Terraform. What if your application's already up and running and you have a bunch of Linode resources that you've created either using the command line interface or the web UI? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to take existing Linode resources and import them into your Terraform configuration so that you can adopt infrastructure as code for your ongoing project. Hello, my name is Sid, also known as DevOps Directive here on YouTube, and I'm a developer advocate working with Linode. If what I just said doesn't make much sense because you're new to infrastructure's code and Terraform, you might want to watch the introductory video that I've created. It's linked to in a card up there. Now, before we get started, there's a few housekeeping items to take care of. First, you'll need to have a Linode account set up with some resources running that you want to import into Terraform. If you don't already have an account, there'll be a link in the description that will give you $100 credit when you create a new account, which is plenty to get started with your first few applications. Second, you should have the Linode command line interface installed in your development environment. If you have Python 3 and pip installed, this can be done by running pip3 install linode-cli. Third, you should have Terraform installed as well. We'll provide a link to the official Terraform documentation for installing it, and also I'll note that I'm using Terraform version 0.14, which is the latest at the time of recording. If you're using a different version, you may need to modify the process slightly. Terraform accesses your Linode account using an API token. If you're uncertain how to set this up, you can reference my previous video, which walks through that process. With those out of the way, let's get into it. If you've used Terraform before, you're likely familiar with the init, plan, and apply commands used to provision resources. This guide will be using one of the less frequently used commands, import. The import command allows you to take existing resources within your Linode account and bring them into your Terraform state file so that you can manage them and update them with Terraform. As I mentioned during the introduction, the use case for this is if you've already started a project and deployed some resources either via the web UI or the command line, and you want to start using infrastructure as code to more effectively manage your infrastructure. We're gonna import four resources into Terraform today. I provision these ahead of time via the UI, this example Linode server here, this volume attached to that server, and then a domain, as well as a domain record pointing to our Linode. It's important to point out that each of these is going to need to be imported individually. And while the import command do bring the resources into the state file, it does not generate the corresponding Terraform configuration, so we'll need to do that manually. Let's get started with the Linode server. In order to set up Terraform to connect to our Linode account, we're gonna do a few things. First, we're gonna create this .tf file containing a block that defines which providers we're going to use, in this case, the Linode provider. It also specifies that we have to use greater than version 0.13 in order for it to be compatible. This Linode provider block allows us to pass the API token that will authenticate to our account, and I'm using a variable for that, which is stored in the separate file terraform.tfvars. Don't worry, I'll revoke access from this credential after I finish recording. With those set up, we can run terraform init to get things configured. This is going to download that provider, instantiate this .terraform file, as well as creating a lock file in our local directory. With Terraform initialized, we now need to get information about that Linode instance that I deployed earlier. So I'll do Linode CLI Linodes list, and then I can use the JSON option to specify that I want the object to be returned as JSON, and the pretty option to print it in a nicer format. Let me just scroll up here. So this shows us that one Linode within our account uh, and all the information about it. The key information here is this ID number that we're going to use to actually specify which Linode we're talking about. Now we need to create an empty resource block within our configuration file that we can import the resource into. So we'll use resource, it's of type Linode instance, uh, and we can give it whatever name we want. I'm gonna name it example instance. Save that, and now we can run the terraform import command using the ID number that we got from the CLI before. So it'll be terraform import Linode instance, example instance, referencing the same variable name, internal reference name we used, and then the Linode ID. Great, it looks like it was able to find that Linode within our account and bring it into the state. If we open up the state file here, we can see that it actually brought that resource in and is now included here. At this point though, we need to specify 
the characteristics of that resource within this resource block, or else when we do a Terraform plan, it's going to notice that our configuration isn't actually valid. We can use the Terraform show command to get some additional information about the instance. This is the type of information that's going to go into our configuration. We definitely need a region. And our machine is in US West. I'm going to systematically go through and use Terraform plan, and it will identify which fields are still missing. Here we can see it's using my account default for the machine type, when instead we actually want to keep it as this G6 nanode 1. So I'll specify a type. Also, I'll need to include this config so that it can remain active. Terraform show. So I'm going to grab this config as well as the disk definitions. I know that I don't want to define the stack script data or this ID in either of the two disks because those are identified after Terraform has deployed these things. Now I'll do another Terraform plan. And it says no changes, infrastructure up to date. So it looks like we're good on the Linode front. If I did want to change something about my Linode, I could do so by modifying this config. Let's say I wanted to upgrade it to a standard. Then if I did a plan, it would show me that that has changed. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply that just to show you this resource that we initially had created in the GUI, we then brought into Terraform, and now we're modifying via Terraform. I do Terraform apply. It asks me if that change is indeed what I wanna do. It is. And so now if I go back to the web UI, I should be able to see this one shutting down and a new one being brought up in its place with a bigger size. Here we see that larger Linode coming online. Great, let's repeat that process for the domain. Again, the first step is to get information about that domain from the Linode CLI. Domains, list, JSON, Pretty. Here's the domain that I had included before. I'll create a separate file to import this domain, and I'll call it domain import.tf. Again, we're going to want to have an empty resource within here. Resource Linode domain is the type, and I'll call it example domain. The domain ID, I'll copy from here. And now we can do Terraform import the node domain dot example domain, and then the domain ID. Great, it looks like that was successful. I'm going to do Terraform show. And this is showing both our Linode that we configured before, as well as our domain here at the top. Now the key information that we need to include from our domain in this resource block are the domain itself. That's gonna be equal to my super awesome domain. Yes, that's a real domain that I own. Uh, the email associated with that domain. And the type of record, in this case, master. Great, if I do a Terraform plan, we can see that it successfully matched our resource and the configuration that we defined matches that within the state. So nothing needs to change. Next up, we wanna add that domain record 
pointing our domain to our Linode. Once again, we're going to use the Linode CLI to get information about the domain records that we're trying to import. Linode CLI domains records list the domain ID and then again the JSON and pretty flags. Here we can see that Linode has created a number of domain records associated with our account. In this case, I'm going to use this A record pointing www.mysuperawesome site to my Linode's IP address. So I'll use this record ID. I could put it in the same file, but I'm just going to create a new file called domain record import.tf and create an empty record associated with that domain record. Resource, it is a Linode domain record, and I'll call it example domain record. Now we want to import it with the Terraform import command. You may have noticed that only in my first TF file that I need to include this information about, about the provider. Because these are all in the same directory, technically they're within the Terraform main module, and they can share this one provider configuration. That's why I don't need to redefine that information here. Then, once again, we'll use that terraform import command, and it is a Linode domain record. And the name is example domain record. We then need to provide it two pieces of information, the domain that it's associated with, comma, and then the record ID that we got from the Linode CLI. Awesome, looks like it was imported. I can then do terraform show to get some more information. I'll find the record associated here. Here we go. And this contains most of the information that we'll need to include in our resource configuration. We don't need to specify the ID. Now if I do terraform plan, Looks like things are up to date. We've got our Linode, our domain, and our domain record imported into our configuration and managed by Terraform. The final resource that we want to import is going to be that volume. Again, the process is using Linode CLI, volumes, list, JSON, pretty. Here's the information about that volume I created before. The ID is here. I'm going to create the empty resource configuration file, Linode volume import.tf. The resources of type Linode volume. And for name, I'll do example volume. Now we want to import it with the Terraform import command the node volume dot example volume and then the ID. Okay, we were able to import it successfully. Once again, I'll Terraform show to get some more information. Here's the volume portion. The key information that I want to include are going to be the Linode ID This tells it which Linode it's attached to, the region, the size, and I'll include the label. That should be sufficient to define this volume completely. I'll do a Terraform plan just to check. And look, we have our four resources that we imported into our Terraform state. We mapped those resources onto their corresponding configs, and now they're fully managed by Terraform. And if we need to make changes in the future, we can do so by modifying these config files and then do a Terraform apply like I did for that Linode earlier on. 
Hopefully that's given you an idea of the process of bringing existing resources into your Terraform configuration using the Terraform import command. Again, the general process is use the Linode CLI to get the ID of the resource. Then create an empty resource block within one of your Terraform configuration files, and then use the Terraform import command to tie those two together. Finally, you need to take a portion of the state from that resource and build it into the config so that when you go to plan and apply in the future, the resource and its configuration will match. Once you've done that, you'll be able to manage your resources using Terraform and reap the benefits of using infrastructure as code for your projects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe. Also, leave a comment below letting us know what type of content you'd like to see more in the future. That's it for today. Take care.